Hi and welcome to this video on how to play Crokinole. I'm Eric Johnson with Colorado Craft and in the next couple of minutes I'm going to be taking you through the rules of Crokinole so you know how to play the game. This is a Crokinole board. This is what you'll play the game with. It's divided up into sections. It's divided into rings. The center hole here is called the center hole. It's worth 20 points if you get a disc in there. This next ring is uh, worth 15 points if a disc is there. This next ring is worth 10. And this outer ring all the way around the board is worth 5 points. The objective is to get your discs closer to these higher scoring rings while knocking your opponent's discs of the opposing color further away or into the gutter to score no points. The board is also divided into four shooting quadrants. Okay, Those are the quadrants from which each player will take their shot. So if I'm playing a two-player game, I'm going to have an opponent sitting here across from me, and they'll be representing, say, the black discs. And I'll be using this quadrant in front of me and the natural discs. In this case, two-player game, each person gets 12 discs. You can also play this in teams. If you play in teams, you sit across from your teammate. Me and my teammate would use the same color, and our opponents would use the opposite color. So in this case, I would sit here using clear. My teammate is across from me, also using the, the natural or the clear discs. And my our opponents are here in these two quadrants using the black discs. The games play the same whether you're playing it two or four player. Uh, just you won't use these quadrants for shooting in a two player game, whereas all four quadrants are in use in a four player game. On your turn, and again, 12 discs in front, take your 12 discs to, for setup. Put them outside the table in front of you. Do not put them in this area, which is known as the gutter, because this is where discs go to die and score no points. So you don't want anything in there. You want them outside on the table. For a two-player game, I'm going to take 12 of my color and set them over here. And my opponent's going to take 12 of their color, set them off the table in front of them. Randomly choose a start player and go. The only difference is in now in a four-player game, I would take six discs of my color, so six black. My teammate across from me would also take six black and then each of our opponents would take six of their color okay so no matter what a team whether that be you by yourself or you and a teammate will always get 12 discs so you either take them all or you split them up on your turn you'll randomly choose a start player to go it doesn't really matter who but you randomly choose a start player for this first round on your turn you'll take one shot after my shot the person on my left will take a shot in a two-player game, obviously, that just alternates back and forth. In a four-player game, I shoot, one of my opponents shoots, my teammate shoots, the other opponent shoots, and so on, so on and so forth until all of our discs have been shot. To make a shot, your disc must be in your shooting quadrant, which is defined by these lines. Okay, So in a two-player game, I shoot from this quadrant, my opponent shoots from this quadrant. In a four-player game, our opponents shoot from these two quadrants. When you take your shot, you take your disc, you have to place it so that it's touching this back line, so the shooting line, okay? It has to be touching this line. It has to be in your quadrant, however, only half of the disc has to remain in your quadrant. So you could overlap up to half your disc into the neighboring quadrant if you'd like, okay? There's also a, depending on how serious you are about crokinole, there's what's called the one cheek rule and crokinole is supposed to be played sitting and you're not supposed to lean anymore or get up out of your chair in, in a way that you would not have at least one cheek in contact with your seat at all times so you're allowed to lean but you can't get up you're also not allowed to move your chair and you're not allowed to move the board during the game okay when you take your shot you'll be faced with one of two conditions one, a board like this where there are no opponent discs on the board or two, a board where there are several opponent discs on the board Okay. In the opening shot, you're always going to have an empty board. There'll be no other discs out here. In that case, you have to take you can take a free shot to try to get your disc into this center hole, which is again worth 20 points. But barring that, barring getting it actually in the hole, you must at least get in this 15 line, this 15 hole, or at least touch the line for the 15 circle. So you'd take your shot by flicking your disc, no pushing, okay? It's a flick flick of your finger like this some people will just curl their finger back and flick it forward okay that's okay as long as it's a clear flick and you're not pushing the disc okay so a clear flick now i'm going to take my shot i get a free shot at the center hole so i'm going to take my shot that was way too hard obviously that doesn't count it goes off the other side of the board okay so that one wouldn't count a nice light shot 
I hit a post there, but as you can see, I'm at least touching this black line, therefore that shot counts, it stays on the board. Had I not completely overshot the hole and done something like that, again, that's fine, had I hit the post and now I'm out of the 15 line, this shot is invalid because I'm not in that center hole. It would be removed from the board to the gutter because it was an invalid shot. Okay? So let's say black got their, their shot and it was perfectly valid and it's here. It would then pass to the left. We're playing teams. My opponent would take a white shot and now they would shoot. The difference here is they're not shooting at a board with no opponent discs on it. They're shooting at a board with an opponent disc on it. They now must have their disc at some point in the shot hit my disc, one of my discs, okay? So a legal shot, and I'm just going to take this this way just to sort of be able to show you, a legal shot would look something like this. I have my white disc, I'm lined up on that black disc, and I'm going to go ahead and take a shot. This was a legal shot because I hit an opponent disc. You don't have to hit the opponent disc directly. You can do combos, okay? So if I had a black disc here and a white disc here, I'd be perfectly valid double tapping and hitting that black disc. Now clearly this wasn't a great shot because they're still in this 15 ring. A better shot would be something where I knock their their disc further away. And in this case, I didn't knock it out of the ring, but I got closer, it stayed here. Obviously the goal at the end of the day is to do this, push it away, or even get it to where like you can pop it into the gutter while getting yourself a pretty nice shot at that center hole, okay? Now, those are the two types of shots, and now we're just going to alternate. So you either take the free shot at the 20 hole when there's no opponent disc, or you have to hit an opponent disc. That's it. As long as the opponent disc moves, you're fine. If you fail to move an opponent disc, let's say I'm trying to hit this black one, and I fail to hit it, this disc, because it was shot and did not hit an opponent disc, is removed to the gutter. Convert. Also, if I were to shoot and hit my own disc and not hit an opponent disc during my shot, the disc I shot and any of the discs on my color, of my color that moved, that I also hit, come off to the gutter. So it's pretty bad to hit your own discs and fail to hit an opponent disc. This is basically now just going to alternate around the table. If at any time, again, you face the situation where the board is clear, you set up, take your free shot at the 20 hole. If you get it in the 20 hole, you go ahead and take this off the board and you set it aside on your scoring track, on your piece of paper, whatever you're using to keep score, to indicate that this will score 20 points later on. You don't leave it in here because this is always open so other people can get discs in. Okay. Last but not least, there is the rare occurrence, and I don't even think I could reproduce it, where a disc flies off the board and comes back on. Most commonly it happens if you have some discs in the trough, something like this, because now this disc won't fall into the trough, and it can bounce and come back. Let's see if I can even make it happen. No, it's very, it's very rare, but it does happen occasionally. Yeah, it's not happening now. Where the disc goes off the board, hits the rail, comes back under the field of play. If that happens, the disc that flew off the board and came back is obviously removed from the game. It's not a legal shot. However, any disc that it might have disrupted and hit after it came back on the board, so it bounces and comes back in here, moves all these discs around, anything that it hit, you do not try to reset. You leave where they end up. You just take the disc off the board that came back. That could include knocking one of your own or an opponent disc into the center hole. This will score. You will just remove the disc that came back on the board. Okay? And that's it. You're going to alternate back and forth, taking shots. Black's going to shoot. White's going to shoot, attempt to hit that black disc. It did. Black actually got bumped into a center hole. It gets moved off. Now my opponent from this side is going to take a shot. It hit the white discs. And just back and forth until you're out of discs and everyone has taken their shots. Okay? So at the end of the game, you might have something that looks like this. Okay? And the game just ended. Keep in mind, um, this back line, I, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but this back line, anytime a disc is touching this, it's considered in the gutter. So if I take a shot and I'm able to knock, say this, this black disc hits this white disc, and this white disc stops here, touching this back line, that's considered in the gutter. So at the end of someone's shot, anything touching this line, just go ahead and flip it off to the gutter. All right? So you're going to get to the end of the game. It might look something like this. You can now score. Only the team with the higher number of points scored. 
So the way this works is, remember earlier I hit that 20 hole, so I'd have that 20 off the board. So that would be worth 20, and I'm just going to add up the black team score. Anything that's not fully in a ring is moved to the lower ring. This one here is touching the line, so it's moved into the 5 zone. This one's perfectly in the 5 zone, it's fine. Both of these are in the 15. This white one, I don't know if you can see from your angle, but it is touching the line, so it moves down. This one also touching the line. It moves down, this one's fine. So I have my 20 from off the board, 30, these two fives make 40, plus 15 makes 55 points for black. The white team would score 15, 20, 25. But the way this works is only one team scores. So you subtract the lower score from the higher score. So the white scored 25, the black scored 55. Therefore, on your scoring track or your sheet of paper or whatever, you would actually record the difference. So black would score 55 minus 25, or 30 points. Take the discs off the board, you play again until somebody reaches 100 points. Another popular way to score, and it's actually the way that I'll usually do it when I play the game. So let's just reset this real quick to show you. Okay, this was worth 20. So, uh, I'm going to put one in the 15 ring. Since only one team scores, what a lot of people will do is they'll just cancel. Uh, this black's 15 and this white's 15, so they'll say, this cancels out, it comes off. This black is 10, this white is 10. They cancel, it comes off. This black, this white, both five, they cancel, they come off. And now that I'm down to one team's colors, I add the point. I have the 20 plus the 5. In this case, it would be 25. I didn't put them back exactly the way they were, so it didn't come up to 30 but I'd have 25 points. So it's a quick way to score. It's called cancellation scoring. It's a little bit quicker and easier than uh, adding both sides up and then doing the math. Then everyone takes their discs back. Play again until you reach 100. Another quick way to score it, and it's called tournament scoring if you want to use this. Basically, it's the same thing. You're going to add up both sides' points. Whoever scored highest, doesn't matter what they scored. It could be 107 or 105 to 0. They scored two points for winning that game. In the event of a tie, they, both teams would get one point, and you're playing to eight at that point. So the tournament scoring sort of takes the blowout out of the competition. So if I have a bad round where I give up 80 points to my opponent, if I'm playing to 100, I'm probably done at that point. I'm not going to rally back from that. If, however, we're doing tournament scoring, I'm only down 2 nothing. and all I have to do is win the next game, and we're tied. Okay. In, so in tournament scoring, in the event of a tie, both teams get one. In regular scoring in the event of a tie, both teams will score zero. So 30 for the white, 30 for the black, zero points are scored when you're playing to 100. And that's it. That's how you play Crokinal. Pretty simple, fun game. Um, really sort of an enjoyable time for gamers, non-gamers. Um, it's a great bar game. Just a lot of fun. If you haven't gotten yourself into Crokinal, I would highly suggest checking it out. And while you're checking out Crokinole, please check out our website at coloradocraft.biz for a great selection of handmade Crokinole boards, custom boards, accessories such as discs, little boxes to store your discs in, scoring tracks, you name it. So check us out at coloradocraft.biz. Hope you've enjoyed this video and it's given you a little insight into the game and now you know how to play it. You can pick up a board, start playing with your friends. Thanks a lot and have a great time playing some Crokinole.